the book of Luke chapter 1 I want us to read from verse 5 the book of Luke chapter 1 let us read from verse 5 are you there on the table the book of Luke chapter 1 from verse 5 The Bible is saying, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the division of Abijah. His wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were born, they were both righteous before God walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren. And they were both well advanced in years. So it was that while he was serving as priest, before God in the order of his division according to the custom of priesthood his lot fell to burn essence when he went into the temple of the Lord and the whole multitude of the people was praying outside at the hour of essence then an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing on the right side of the altar of incense and when Zacharias saw him he was troubled and fear fell upon him but the angel said to him do not be afraid Zacharias for your prayer is heard and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you shall call his name you shall call his name John. And you have joy and gladness. And many will rejoice at his birth. Because you be great in the sight of the Lord. And shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit. Even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zachariah said to the angel, listen carefully, and Zachariah said to the angel, How shall I know about this? Because I'm an old man, and my wife is well advanced in years. And the angel answered. Listen to the answer of the angel. The angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God. And I was sent to speak to you and bring you good news. I was sent to speak to you and give you good news. Behold, but behold, you will be mute, meaning you will not be able to speak until the day these things take place. Because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their own season. And the people waited for Zacharias and were marveled that he lingered so long in the temple. But when he came out, he could not speak to them, and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned to them. And remained speechless. Hallelujah. 
So it was as soon as the days of this service were completed and he departed to his own house. Thank you so much. Can you also bring the verse I gave you from the book of Genesis? The book of Genesis. Yes, Genesis chapter 18, verse 14. The Bible is saying, Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are here for a day of miracles. We are here to push a miracle upon someone's life. You know, as Christians, we enjoy the grace of the Lord. Not because we did something to warrant that grace, but because he died for us and he loved us even before we knew him. So we enjoy the grace of the Lord, which is a free gift of the Holy Spirit to mankind. So every Christian, every believer automatically enjoys the grace of the Lord. So for you to enjoy the grace of the Lord, you don't need to sweat. You don't need to do anything. All you need to do is to confess that the Lord is your Savior, Jesus Christ. So then you enjoy the grace of the Lord. Christians also enjoy what is called a blessing. A blessing is usually a result of your righteousness. When you do well according to the commands of God, then God blesses you. Remember it says, seek you first the kingdom and its righteousness and all you need shall be added unto you. It means when you are able to seek the kingdom, when you are able to attain righteousness, you then qualify for the blessing of the Lord. So a blessing comes because of our righteous attitude, our righteous act, our ability to seek the kingdom of the Lord and its principles. But then there is what is called a miracle. A miracle comes to us not by our righteousness, not by our indulgence, but as a result of God trying to save us from tragedy or crisis. So, a miracle is not a response to prayer. A miracle is God's decision to rescue you from your crisis. So, when the widow in the book of 2 Kings went to Elisha, she was in a crisis. She was about to lose her children. She said, man of God, before my husband died, he left Ngongole and the owners of that money have come and they want to take away my children. Do something, man of God. And the man of God responded to that crisis by performing a miracle of multiplying the oil. When the children of Israel were faced with the Red Sea, God responded to that crisis by opening up the Red Sea. That was a miracle. When Abraham, the father of faith, was in a crisis of barrenness, the Lord came and performed a miracle of fruitfulness. Because even himself, Abraham, did not expect that he can have a child. Because he said, I am now old. And my wife, Sarah, is also very old. There is no way we can have a child. But because of a miracle, a child was born. I don't know what kind of crisis you are facing right now. 
you might be in a financial crisis you have prayed you have fasted you have gone to the mountains nothing is moving the lord wants to do a miracle in order to rescue you from that crisis in the name of jesus am i speaking to you somehow someone must remember about you somehow someone must give you a call that is going to connect you financially somehow someone must cancel your debts somehow someone must come and say i have settled your gongole in the name of she because you have come at a point of saying although i may work hard i don't think ngongole is ending at an end all you need now is god of miracles to come and say what is the crisis my daughter what is the crisis my sister rise up and walk in the name of she tell neighbor i need a miracle now 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 because you are in a crisis you have gone to every doctor and they are telling you there is nothing we can do you have tried on your own righteousness you have tried to pray on yourself but there is still a crisis and the lord of miracles is going to show up and take away that crisis by his miracle working hand so ukakala kuti wafika pa kakas ndipa mene mulunga mabwe andicho zizwa ukakala kuti wafika pa matelo poti palibe so komwe ungapite ndipa mene mulunga mabwe andicho zizwa ukafika pone kuti palibe so chomwe ningachite abale onse apita Kawanda yesa kutula kubalibe afuna unitandiza Mulungama abuelesa chozizwa Kuli nyengu yako isinte mzina resu kristi So the Bible is saying Man of God, Zakaria Was very righteous And yet barren He was very prayerful And yet there was no cry of a baby in his house He even came to a point of giving up he could no longer pray for a child because he now knew even if God may hear my prayer, I am very old and there is nothing that can happen. My wife is also very old. But the Lord Almighty sent an angel. An angel came to him and said, Zachariah, do not be afraid because your prayer is heard. Do not be scared because your prayer has been heard many of us as christians we are faithful inside our hearts yet fearful outside most of us we have believed inside of our hearts but yet outside of us we are surrounded by fear we know god is able but because of the happenings around our lives we somehow become afraid and we say lord is this really possible fear is a more dangerous enemy than the devil himself fear of death is more dangerous than death fear of sickness is more dangerous than sickness fear of shame is more dangerous than the shame fear of failure is more dangerous than the actual failure when the devil wants to fight a believer he first of all injects a dosage of fear into our mind and the moment we are afraid we panic and we can no longer focus on the promise of god so if you must succeed as a christian if you must succeed as a believer you must first of all take away the fear you must tell yourself my life do not be afraid because god is in control tell your neighbor do not be afraid because the lord is in control chifukwa manta ndopya kwambiri kuposa satana manta ndopya kwambiri kuposa umphawi manta matenda ndamina mamupa munthu osati matenda Sikuli mene uza siye kuchita manta ndi sikuli mene uza ayambe kukupita mulungu kuti ndi mulungu waza teka banji ndipo chozizo cha mulungu uza kana nacho Am I speaking to you? 
So Zachariah was a man of faith in his heart. But outside he was afraid. He was a man of faith in his heart. But outside he was afraid. Brethren, the thing that makes us calm is not what we have seen, but what we have believed. The thing that makes us smile in the midst of challenges is not what we have seen with our eyes, but what we have believed. Because our faith is not based on sight, it is based on the promises of the Lord. The moment we believe the promise of the Lord, it doesn't matter what our eyes is able to see. What matters for us is what God has promised to do in our lives. Outwardly, you might be sick in body and yet inside very healed in Jesus. Outside, you might be very poor and yet inside a friend of Jesus. You can be barren like Zachariah and yet a servant of the Lord. Because our faith is not based on what we see. Our faith is based on what we have believed. This God we have believed, we have never seen him with our eyes. But we have heard about him and we have believed him. The healing that you are going to have will not be based on what you have seen. But what you have heard about what God is able to do. If you take God's promise at heart, you are accepting God's miracle in your life. So all you need is to focus on what God has said and not what your eyes have seen. According to sight, it was impossible for Zachariah to have a baby. According to sight, it was not possible for his wife to conceive. But according to God's word, all is possible. To your neighbor, according to God's word, all things are possible. Yes, I mean, according to your sight, it is not possible to get healed from that sickness. Yes, according to your sight, it is not possible for you to be blessed. Yes, according to your sight, it is not possible for you to break through. But according to the word of Jesus, you are the next one to testify. You are the next one to be healed. You are the next one to be delivered. So don't base your faith on what you see. Base your faith on what you believe. Base your faith on the promises of salvation. Not on the attacks that you are surviving. A man can be sick in body and yet a friend of Jesus. A man can be poor in body and yet the favorite candidate of heaven. You can be useless in the sight of men but very valuable in the sight of Jesus. Tell your neighbor, my faith shall not fail. My faith in Jesus Christ shall not fail. Whatever he promised for me, I shall wait for it to come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. So the Bible says, when the angel of God came to Zachariah and said, you shall have a child. Zachariah was afraid. Zachariah was doubting and yet inside he was a man of God. Outside, doubting. Inside, man of God. The angel came to say, we want a balance between what you believe and what you confess. You shall have a son. And she shall prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. The man of God went on to say, How shall it be? How can this happen? The man of God 
zingateke bwanji popeza ineyo ndi nkazwanga ndife nkalamba silinga kale ndi mwana zingateke bwanji zimene mukunena the angel of the lord said according to god this will happen according to according to god this will happen as far as god is concerned you shall testify as far as god knows you shall be healed as far as god knows you shall be delivered if you know how your miracle will take place then you can as well do it yourself if you know how your healing will take place then you can as well heal yourself if you know how your deliverance will be done you can as well deliver yourself but because you don't know that's why it requires god i don't know how you are going to be healed but god knows i don't know how you are going to be blessed but god knows i don't know how you are going to be delivered but god knows i don't know how you are going to be blessed but god knows tell me but god knows god knows your responsibility is to believe what he has said his own role is to do what he has promised for the sick he has promised healing for the poor he has promised a blessing for the lost he has promised salvation and he said i shall never leave you i am with you always only god knows only god what only god knows only god knows but one thing is for sure you shall no longer be the same you shall no longer be what in the book of genesis chapter 18 where we read the angel of god said in the time of life the baby will be in your hands i shall come back here next year and in the time of life i shall meet a baby it means our prayer of today is for our tomorrow's testimony you don't pray today and see with your eyes today you pray and receive today and show it tomorrow for a baby to be conceived to be born it has to take the time of life nine months must go for the baby to come out the prayer that you are going to offer today you may not see the results today but in the time of life you shall remember about this day you shall say because of that day i have got my own baby because of that day i have got my own company because of that day i have got my own business because of that day i am healed because of that day my life has changed in jesus my name now you have been praying for so long the day has come for god to answer that prayer mwaka mu pempela ntawe ya itali mulungu wakonzeka kuti akuyanke ni pempelo lano la ntawe ya itali mudzina ndi mwazi wa Yesu Kristo kwa pali chindu chimozi chimene chimani sangalaso can i do nyanja it's okay then for the sake of Mozambique as a jump back pali chindu chimozi chimene china ndi sangalatsa pamene ngelo makumana ndi zakaria ngelo namuza kuti Zakaria chifuwa choti wakaika chifuwa choti wakaika kuti zizi sizingateke kuyambira leloli sutsa ya nkulanso paka na kufikira mwana uyuyu amene ndaya nkulayo adzabadwe and bible kunena kuti 
mwepo Zakaria anasanduka wachi nunu anasanduka mtu anakula amafuna hata ankula kwa mamausa mateka kuta turuke chifuka mau yake amena nali mkati mwa Zakaria anali mau amanta ndipo manta ama ononga chikubiro chatu chili chonse chimene takulubirira chima onongeka ndi manta ngero anane nakuti sindi kulola kuti uyankule mawa kwa manta paka na mwana ayo atadani that's what the angel said he said you shall remain mute you shall remain silent until the baby is born until what i have spoken comes to pass the bible says the man of god went out of the temple and as he went out people were waiting for him to hear from him as a man of god as he tried to speak he found out that he could not speak words could not come out there was a word inside which failed to come out because he was silenced when you meet someone that is mute it is not their wish not to speak they have got the right ways to speak they have got the desire to speak but they don't have the ability to do so they will be like they will wish but whatever they are wishing will never come to pass what am i trying to say the lord says today you are going to be healed but maybe in your heart there is doubt that is telling you how can i be healed this is not possible the anointing of the lord almighty is going to silence your doubt but no matter how much you doubt but you shall not be able to confess your doubt you shall only confess that which favors your testimony may your doubt be silenced 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 may your doubt be silent am i speaking to you am i speaking to you because whatever we speak with our mouth is what we live to see from the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks and if whatever is in your heart does not favor your testimony the anointing of god will make you mute it will silence you until the testimony is here in the name of jesus christ of nazareth what am i trying to say whatever i shall declare to you today whether you like it or not it shall come to pass in the name of jesus whether you like it or not it shall come to pass in the name of jesus whether you like it or not it shall come to pass in the name of C. Listen. The young man who was testifying that now I have a car, another car, I have bought, I'm building a house. He says he never went to school. And he never thought of having any business someday. But when he came, I said, you shall be fruitful. If you saw him when he was coming to my office, he had a torn shirt. His shirt was torn. He had dust on his shoes and trousers. I said to him, you shall buy your own cars. You shall have your own company. You shall have your own business. Go and succeed. In his heart, maybe you are saying, how shall it happen? God knows how. God knows. Greet the next billionaire. Say good morning, billionaire. Good morning, billionaire. Uh, good morning, billionaire. Greet the next huge person. Say good morning to your health. Good morning to your business. Good morning to your finances. God knows how. God knows how. God knows how. You move mountains. You cause war to. We 
with your power you perform me For more teachings, prophecy, word of wisdom, and demonstration of God's power, visit Prophet P. Gondwe at the Healing Fountain in Lilongwe, Malawi. Contact plus 265-999-810-981 or plus 265-998-327-6000. Or send an email to visit.ppgministries at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook at Prophet P. Gondway. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Prophet P. Gondway Ministries. On TikTok and X at Prophet P. Gondway Ministries. And on Instagram and threads at Prophet P. Gondway Official. Visit our website www.prophetpgondwayministries.org Let there be light.